The news now with Darla Noble and the season series Phenomenal Grandparenting. This is Andy in the Bloomer Boomer TV studio and I invite you to become familiar with the awesome Bloomer Boomer community and platform featuring live programs like today for a full and meaningful life after 55. And now welcome Darla Noble and Phenomenal Grandparenting where Darla focuses on connecting with your grandkids in person. Here's Darla. Hello, I hope everybody's off to a good start for their week. And like Andy said, we are going to do part three. If you remember in part one, we talked about what um, what it looks like to form relationship with your grandkids and why that is so important, things that we should and shouldn't do. Last week, we talked about how to connect with your grandkids long distance when you don't have the privilege of living close to them. And so this week, let's talk about things that we can do when your grandkids live um, within, you know, driving distance, an easy day, maybe across town, maybe across the street, maybe, you know, just a little ways away. So the first thing I want to talk about is just to emphasize the time, give them plenty of time um, with you and not, I, I always say, give them your presence E-N-C-E, not your presence, E-N-T-S, okay? Um, your grandkids love, love, love to be with you. And, and even though you may think they don't, they really, really do. They value that one-on-one -on -one time. Um, and, and the one-on-one -on -one time is what really matters. It's great to go to their sports events. It's great to go to their programs, their school programs, their church programs. That's all very important to them and to you. Uh, but, but to do things just one-on-one -on -one with them or, you know, like two or three of you together is so important. And so I just want to give you some ideas. Um, and I want you to also consider these as far as doing things like this for their birthday, instead of just gifts like that they open and for Christmas and that sort of thing. Um, have regular dates with your grandkids. Go out to eat with them. Let them pick a place one time. You pick a place another time. Make it a special event. Dress up. Um, go places that you wouldn't normally go otherwise and make it like your special event. I know for one of my grandkids, my grandson Ruben, there is a nature park that we like to go to whenever he comes to visit. And it's kind of our thing. We just do that. And I always have like scavenger hunt things printed off so that we can find certain things and collect certain things and then come back and identify them and things like that. Um, ceramics, you know, where you go and you pick out your ceramics and paint it and then come back the next week after they fire it. Um, those are fun things to do to get creative and you can just have fun little conversations. Um, take your kids horseback riding, miniature golfing, um, laser tag, um, shopping for school supplies or new clothes or something for, um, for a special event, um, like that first dance or prom, um, you and mom and your granddaughter take off and spend the day finding that special dress and maybe helping pick out some jewelry to go with it or special shoes or something like that. Um, amusement parks. Now, personally, I'm not one that likes to ride a lot of rides, so I'll just kind of trail along. But my husband and especially our two oldest granddaughters, one day we spent like nine or 10 hours at Silver Dollar City in Branson and they rode rides for eight hours and loved every second of it. And some of my rode and some of my didn't. But you know what? Just to be able to have them enjoy that time with grandpa and just to be able to just be out and do things like that. It was so fun. Um, swimming. Uh, boating, you know, just all sorts of things that you can do. Now at home, there's, you know, you don't have to entertain them 24 seven. There's so many things you can do at home with them. Look through old pictures together, show them the pictures of their parents when they were little. They love that. Um, they crack up when they look at, see those old school pictures that look like mugshots, okay, or dance recital pictures or cross country meets or things like that. They love to see those pictures. And then they love for you to tell stories about their parents. Um, my grandkids that live farther away, you know, like two or three hours away, we do road trips back and forth to come and get them and take them home. And we play car games, but 
most, their most favorite thing is for me to tell stories about me when I was little, about their parents when they were little or their aunts and uncles, um, and about them even when they were little, when they were tinier and when, you know, things that they don't remember. Tell those family stories. I know at the beginning of the podcast, Andy flashed up, I think, my book, Please Pass the Memories. And next week, we're going to talk a lot about that. But that book is filled with ideas on how you can share your family story and make memories with your grandkids, spending time with them. Um, you know, pull some of those old toys out of the act. I've got some old card games like Crazy Eights and things like that from when I was little. They're, they're doing nothing sitting on a shelf. Use those with your grandkids. Play those games with your grandkids. Um, you know, and talk about, and when you do, talk about the things that you did when you were little, your friends, and what your friends did with you when you were little. Um, get those questions games, you know, like, would you rather, and um, if you could be, you know, anybody famous or do anything, um, and have these great conversations with your grandkids, okay? It's all about, like I said the first week, relationship. Um, at our house, science experiments are a big thing. Yes, I'm a writer, but my gosh, we love to do science experiments, blow things up or, um, you know, just all sorts of things. See how long it takes for things to grow. Um, we baked cookies using the sun and tinfoil, uh, you know, just all sorts of different things like that. We love to do those things. Um, I'm a big gardener too. My grandkids love to help me in the garden. They love to um, help pick beans or strawberries or whatever. And then um, baking, baking cookies, making jelly, making pies. Some of my grandkids, when they're here, they never go home without making a pie or cookies or something to take home to mom and dad. Uh, just just all sorts of things, just being with them, investing yourself into the lives of your grandkids. That's what it's all about. Um, just sewing, uh, teach them these things, these little things that, uh, that are really important that kids don't always learn anymore, whether it be sewing on a button or making an apron or um, book bags or purses or, you know, just different things like that. Sewing, um, science, arts and crafts. Um, I've got a couple of grandkids that are really artistic, far more artistic than I will ever be. But, uh, but you know, I turn them loose with, with crayons and markers and sequins and glue and glitter and stickers and paper and all sorts or rocks, painting rocks. Um, and then they love to paint rocks and put them all in my flower beds and in my flower pots and stuff. And every time they come back, they want to check to make sure their rocks are still where they left them. And that's a really big thing for them. Um, cooking. They love to cook. They especially, I've got a couple of grandkids that especially love to cook with grandpa. Um, he, he loves to do like their, his homemade potato chips or pancakes or just different things. And they love to do those things. They don't want to just watch. Um, I know my granny was such a great example of she never did this um well watch me to see how it's done so you'll know how to do it someday it's do this with me so that you will learn she was so good at that and i gotta admit sometimes there's some things i'm like oh just let me do it and we'll we'll go on to something else later but she was never like that and i try so hard not to be like that um i want them to be able to do with me so that they will learn and so that they will have um, those memories. We'll both have those memories of doing these things together. Um, I'm going to stop for just a second because I know Andy sometimes gets questions from the audience. But I also received some questions last week about spending time with grandkids. And when I said we were going to talk about doing it in person, I had some people contact me and ask me some things that I'd like to cover that are not um, just so much about things in particular that you actually do, but ways to be ready to do those things. And the first question I had was, my grandkids are little, and so what about the whole car seat thing? I am just going to advise you up front, invest in some car seats, okay? Um, whether it be booster, you don't have to have one for every grandkid, but have a booster 
and have a car seat that an infant and an older, a toddler can ride in because it is such a pain to take those in and out of mom and dad's car and get them in your car. If you're, you know, in a parking lot, switching kids, or if you're someplace, you know, like in a park or something, um, just have those ready. And so that you can have them in your car when you are ready to get your grandkids, it makes it so much easier on you and on mom and dad. Um, also, I'm going to say brush up on your first date. Okay. Kids are kids. They're going to, um, they're going to get hurt. They're going to get scrapes. They're going to get cuts. You need to know, you need to be um, mindful of what you do. If they get burned, if they get cut, you know, how to determine whether or not they're going to need stitches. Um, and on that same note, make sure your first aid um, drawer at home is equipped with um, Motrin and fever reducer and anti-itch cream and band-aids and things like that, that are age appropriate for your kids. Okay. Your little ones can't swallow a Tylenol. They need the chewable or the liquid kind, um, earache medicine, um, stuffy nose medicine, some Benadryl um, for if they get seasonal allergies and they come down with something. If they're at your house and maybe the climate's a little different or you have more flowers or grasses or something than they do at home, you need to have those things on hand, okay? Um, you want to make sure that their stay is pleasant and that um, you're not caught unaware, okay? Um, it's also make sure you know how to do the Heimlich maneuver and things like that. Um, going back to other things to have on hand besides car seats, a couple of bicycles or tricycles, um, hula hoops, um, kickball, um, a wiffle ball and bat, um, you know, things that are, um, that fit their hands like little gardening utensils. Um, you know, if you have, uh, if you have big trees in your yard, have a tire swing or a swing set or something like that. Things that your kids can really enjoy and um, so that they're not twiddling their thumbs or it's not like, oh, this is boring. Make sure you have kids movies. Of course, it hasn't been that long since my kids um, have been gone. So I've still got all the, you know, the Disney movies. Disney Plus, $6.99 a month, okay? You'll find yourself watching it. I actually have a cousin who's never been married. Um, has no children and he has um, Disney Plus, he said, so I can watch Apple Dumpling Gang anytime I want. Okay, so there's a lot of things on there that you'll like to watch too, even when the grandkids aren't there. Um, another question I had was, I have special needs grandchildren. How can I um, feel confident and comfortable spending time with them when mom and dad aren't there? Okay. Um, if they have um, breathing treatments that they need, know how to do those. Learn how to do those. If they have an inhaler, um, make sure that you have that. Or if they have serious allergies, make sure you don't leave their home without their EpiPen. If they are, um, if they have ADHD or if they are autistic or have Asperger's or something like that, make sure you know what their triggers are, make sure you know what um, their foods, um, what foods they will eat, if they have texture issues, if they have um, issues with noises or, um, you know, sounds or bright lights, um, you know, if they have vertigo or things like that, um, that you know what these triggers are so that you don't put them and yourselves in unnecessary situations that will cause unpleasant um, events or just unpleasant memories or things that you sh wouldn't have to deal with if you were aware of what they, what their needs were. Um, food allergies, make sure that you don't um, have foods that can, can harm them. Read your food labels. And I'm just going to say that if you're going to have two or three grandkids, at the same time, and one of them has an allergy to say nuts or eggs or something like that, fix things that they can have. And if the others don't get nuts or peanut butter or something that visit, it's not the end of the world. Okay. Don't single them out. Oh, well, they can't have this. So we can't have this. Just 
just make it a natural thing. Now I do have um, a granddaughter that cannot have dairy products. And so she knows she can't have milk, um, the kind of milk that everybody else has. And so we either have her kind of milk or um, we do juice. Okay. And so, you know, it's, there's things like that, that, you know, that you will have to make some concessions on, but, but don't single them out and make them feel like the oddball. Um, you know, just because they can't have something, just make it a, you know, just don't make it a big deal. So, but, and if there are questions about their needs, don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to say, Hey mom, Hey dad, make sure I know how to do this. Make sure I know how to calm them down. Um, if they um, have a meltdown, if they're autistic or, or something like that, and they, you know, there's something that triggers a reaction, um, you know, be, be familiar. Don't shy away from them. They, they deserve every bit of time um, that everybody else has. Don't let that keep you from, from making wonderful memories and being the grandparent they deserve and enjoying that grandchild the way you deserve to be able to. So, okay, Andy, I'm going to stop right now before I move on to the next thing to see if you have any questions. Well, we did uh, get a couple. Um, here is from Stephanie. She says she's looking for fun and interesting activities to engage your grandkids and help them work off excess energy and just wanted to know if you had any ideas on that. Sure. Parks are always a good thing. Um, going to the park is is kind of a given, you know, playground equipment, um, walking a track, these nature, the nature trail that I talked about, um, swimming, miniature golf. I've, I've already mentioned that. Um, if you have more than one grandkid with you, have some Olympics and participate, have like a family Olympics where you have relay games out in the yard, uh, hide and seek. Um, and there again, if you have a bicycle or two around, you can walk or ride your bike while they ride bikes. Um, it's, it's a great way to burn off some energy. Um, teach them some jump rope rhymes. Okay. Jump rope and do some jump rope rhymes. Um, hula hooping, um, you know, just different things like that, that you can either go somewhere or do something at home. Just try not to spend all your time like in front of the television with a movie. If, if you have a Wii or something like that, do the bowling or, you know, the th and have some family competitions and stuff like that and get involved with them. Don't just park them in front of a TV or um, a video game and, you know, things like that. But, but be with them, do things with them. Um, if they're real high energy, uh, you know, jog, OK, or walk through the neighborhood and look for different things. We're big on like scavenger hunt type things, you know, like how many um, how many houses have flowers in front of them? How many houses have cars parked outside? Um, is there a house in in the neighborhood that has the same numbers, but a different street name as us? You know, just that kind of thing. Just heard of it, something that people call geocaching. I'm going to learn more about that. It sounds like something yes. kid, uh, you know, grandkids might like. Yes, yes. Um, I have, uh, I have seven, almost eight grandkids, and they are all so incredibly different. One of them loves to play board games. You, well, there's really two of them that love games. Okay, so we can spend hours and hours playing board games of all different kinds you name it and we play it um, another one like I said loves the the walking and the biking and the hiking um, uh, several of them do I've got a couple of them that are big into rock collecting and the geocaching and stuff so um, we gather up a bunch of rocks and we crack them open and look for crystals we paint rocks um, you know and and don't grandkids aren't a one size fits all your grandkids are as individual as your kids were and as you are so find that thing that um that interests them find out what they enjoy doing and do that with them um whether it be you know shoot some hoops um you know skating swimming um horseback riding i've got one that is 
everything is horses and she loves horses. So I, you know, we, we take her to a stable and let her ride horses for a few hours. Um, you know, just find something that they like and relate to them through that. And then also share your interests with them. Um, when they find out what, what you like to do, um, they'll want to learn with you. I got a one here from Paul, and he says his son is getting remarried, and he's worried his grandkids may have um, difficulty adapting to their real mom and stepmom. He knows it's kind of a hard question, but he just wonders what you think about it. Okay, well, um, that is a that is a situation that happens. We have had that happen um, with in our family with one of our daughters, and you know, I'm very blessed in that. Ruben has um, a dad and a stepdad that both love him very much. His new grandparents have just loved him and welcomed him into the family with open arms. And um, so it's been a very, it's been a really easy transition. And I know that's not always the case, but I will go back to something I said um, the first week, Paul, this isn't your situation. Okay. You are the grandparent and, and don't ever, ever, um, try to talk about, you know, you can answer their questions honestly, but don't ever try to come between your grand and their, their natural parent or their step parent. Don't ever, um, try to, to down the new grandparents. Okay. They, if, if they are willing and, and able and ready to love your grandchild, you need to be glad and thankful for that. Um, you know, there's, we got enough love, we can share that. Okay. And so, so in the more people that love a kid, the better. So just, just pray for them and be there for them. If they, if they come to you and say, you know, this is really yucky. I hate this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Um, you know, or I don't want to go to mom's house or I don't want to go to dad's house. Say, well, you know, this is, I, I'm glad you feel comfortable in talking to me about that, but I'm not the one that can make that decision for you. Let's, um, you know, this is something we need to discuss with your, your mom or your dad, because, because it's not my place to make that decision. Be neutral, be supportive and be loving, but be neutral advice that is well darla where uh what do you uh, let's see we have the we have your book in there and uh, anything else to know about well um there was just a couple other things I, another question that i had from uh, from somebody and they the question was what if my adult children don't want me to spend time with my grandkids? What if there is a strained relationship between me and my adult kids that, that prohibits me from spending time with my grandkids? What do I do? And that is, that is a sad question, but it's one that happens. I personally, the, the person that asked me this question just happens to be a very close friend of mine. And my advice there is to you, you can't butt in. You cannot um, go behind a parent's back because that's only going to make the situation worse between you and your child or your child-in-law. So reach out to your child and say, I know we have our differences. I know um, our relationship needs some help, but please don't make your children pay for that. Please let's not put them in the middle of this. May I please call them every week. May I please send them cards and gifts. May I please see them from time to time if we can meet in the middle somewhere and spend time with them. Um, most of the time, that adult child will love their children enough to let them have that that time or at least let them receive cards and gifts and phone calls from you and letters from you. Um, and so if that be the case, just be vigilant. Don't ever let a week go by that you don't call them, 
that you don't send them a card, that you don't um, send them encouragements about school, ask them how they're doing in school, tell them that you're there, you know, if, if they want to talk about a book or they need help with a subject in school, don't let a week go by that you do not contact them because they need to know that you are, that you want to be with them. Now on that note, don't ever say anything about to the effect, like, I wish I could be with you, but your mom and dad won't let me or something like that. That is a no, no. Be positive. Just make it about you and your grandchild. If your child, your adult child, refuses to let you have any contact with your grandchildren, your hands are tied. Okay, there's there's really nothing you can do other than hope and pray that someday that will change. And and don't just take take their answer as a one and done. Okay. Every couple, three months, reach out to them and say, you know, is there, may I send them a birthday gift? May I send them some Halloween treats? May I send, you know, and let, and take your cue from them. And, and if you are respectful of their decision to say no, but yet stay in contact, I think the fact that you respect them and don't push and try to sneak in a relationship will win them over eventually. Okay. So, um, so yeah, just do what you can, but do it with respect and honoring the fact that, you know, the parent is the parent. Okay. Um, so that's, I'm sorry, go ahead, Andy. No, I just said, thank you. That was very, very good. Appreciate it. Okay. Well, I want to spend the last couple minutes we have, um, talking about um, the book, Please Pass the Memories. And then I also have another book um, on parenting, parenting called Love Mama D. Um, Love Mama D is not about curfews and diapers and homework and that sort of thing. It's about relationships. It's about loving your child unconditionally just because they live and breathe, just because they're yours, okay? And that is so important. Our children need to know and our grandchildren need to know that we don't love them because of the way they look, because of the way they dress, because of how good they can swim or play the piano or how good they can kick a soccer ball or that they make straight A's or or whatever. They need to know that just because they are them, that that's enough, that's more than enough. Okay. And they need to know that we know that. Um, and then the other book, please pass some memories. That's when I really want you guys to order, um, on Amazon, either paperback or Kindle. Um, you can get it to Barnes and Noble. You can order it at any brick and mortar bookstore. Um, if they don't have it in stock, if you are wanting to support your local businesses, which is a good thing, um, please pass some memories. It's Full, just chock full. Every page is about um, connecting with your family through stories, through cooking, through pictures, through keepsakes, through um, traditions, through games, and um, just time, traditions, all sorts of things. And we're going to talk a lot about that next week, about bridging those re- um, generations, bringing them together um, But I I strongly want to encourage you to consider that book um, because it is it's just a handbook of how to be a phenomenal grandparent and parent. Okay, whether it be long distance in person, um, you know, and we all we all want that. We all crave relationships and with everything that's going on in the world, um, you know, there's been a lot of things that have been pushed to the side that we've had to give up. that, that quite honestly, are probably never going to come back, at least to the way they were before um, the coronavirus. But family, family is forever. Um, No matter where, no matter what, family is forever. And, um, and that's a good thing. Okay. So Andy, do you, uh uh-huh. I, uh, as always, it's always uh, enriching and uh, inf- informative uh, for a grandparent especially. So I appreciate all that. Um, anything else before we say until next week? 
Well, if you have any questions, feel free to reach me at um, thenoblerights at yahoo.com. Um, you can check out my website at www.thenoblerights.com. Um, you can like me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. And again, I'll sound like a broken record. The Noble Rights is the, um, is the place to find me. And once again, I just cannot emphasize enough time time with your grandparents or your grandkids invest yourself in them because they are worth it and you will never ever regret any time or any effort that you put in to being a phenomenal phenomenal grandparent well once again thanks so much darla thank you andy and i'll see you guys next week Right. And we want to thank everybody for watching Phenomenal Grandparenting with Darla Noble. We'll be back here the same day, same time next week. You can find out more on Facebook, YouTube, and on bloomerboomer.com. And if you like all this, please like us on Facebook and follow us. In the meantime, get to know Bloomer Boomer, your web platform to spring you to a meaningful life after 55. See you next time.